Hello, hello. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. Phone lines are open, 559-656-0317. Send your questions in to questions at insurancehour.com. We've gotten through a lot of information today. If you've missed any of it, you don't want to, jump online, search for Insurance Hour, and you'll be able to find us. You'll find us also as a podcast. You'll find us on YouTube. You'll find us on Amazon Alexa, LinkedIn, tuned in. Tune in, iHeartMedia, you name it, we're everywhere. Uh, You want to get this information. This is some good stuff. And remember, it's important that you have more information so you can make more informed decisions. That's what we're here for. Before the break, on that note, we were talking about three types of insurance agents or brokers or representatives, generically speaking, that can provide insurance proposals to you. Let's talk about the first one, captive. What does that mean, captive agent? Sounds a little bit scary. You're captive. Well, what that means is you, as a captive insurance agent, are representing one insurance company. You are captive by them. They are basically dictating that if you're going to offer their product, they do not want you offering competing products. No judgment call, just a fact. Now, why is that good? Well, some of the good things that can go along with that are, number one, there is a very tight integration between the insurance agent and the insurance company, right? They are, in essence... Almost, they're not by tax uh, by tax law, they're employees. They're very close. That's the point I'm trying to make. They deal with the same underwriters, the same people at the company, the same reps, the same marketing. It's a typically long-term relationship that they develop. So arguably, since they're dealing with one company and one set of products, they're going to be extremely knowledgeable on the very intricacies of those policies and of the insurance company in general. So that would be an advantage to being potentially a captive insurance broker, would be that intimacy between the insurance agent and the insurance company. There may even be relationships formed between the insurance agent and people that handle claims, right? Don't forget, claims adjusters that work for an insurance company, they're there as well. They're employees of that same insurance carrier, So it's very likely that the insurance agent might in fact have a personal relationship develop. If nothing else, they know each other. And when there's a claim, they'll be able to reach out to that claims adjuster and say, hey, we talked about this one. What do you think? Blah, blah, blah. So let's just call it intimacy when you're dealing with a captive insurance broker. Intimacy, not between you and them, but between them and their one insurance carrier that they have. The next one let's talk about are employee agents. Now that's as close to a captive agent as you can be, but with this, they're not even pretending. They're not saying, well, they're going to look out for you. They're going to do the best they can for you. They're going to, that's probably not entirely fair. They're going to claim that. And by law, they're supposed to be doing that. But an employee agent is clearly motivated to write the policy that is from the insurance company that employs them, similar to a captive agent, right? They are going to want to sell those products, not only because that's how they get their bread buttered, right? But because they don't have any other options exactly like a captive agent. The image I like to show is a circle and, you know, the little squares and what was the game? Not Operation. What was that game called that had different shapes and you set a timer and and it would go tick, 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 tick. And you had to take the different shapes and put them in the little holes and you had to do it fast enough. The triangle and the triangle, the umbrella and the umbrella, the square and the square. You had to do all of that before it just popped up and all the pieces jumped out and and basically took three or four months off your life because it scared you so much. I can't think of it. If you think of it, please shoot me an email, leave me a comment. I I need to know what that is. It's going to bother me. Anyway, um, employee agents, similar to captive, may arguably be trying to force that circle into the square. It's awfully close, right? It should fit. They want to get your business. That's how they make a living. That's how they get paid. This is not a knock. Good captive agents, good employee agents, if they see something that is not the best for the consumer, they would tell them, hey, I don't have what what looks like is what you're looking for. You might need to check somewhere else. That might mean checking with another employee or captive agent. It might mean checking with an independent agent. But a good captive or a good employee agent is going to take that time and still say, hey, I would love to write your business. Either I can't or what I can offer you doesn't sound like it's exactly what you're looking for. You might look elsewhere. But you understand the tug of war because they want your business, right? That's how they make a living. 
Let's move on to independent agents and brokers. Independent agents and brokers, as you probably can guess by the name, are independent. They are not an employee of any insurance company. They are not captive to any one insurance company. So they have the ability to go to multiple insurance companies to obtain insurance. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that they can go to any independent insurance company that they have a contract with. They can't literally go to every insurance carrier and just write a policy because they have to be appointed with that insurance company first. So what would be considered a good insurance agent or broker that's independent would be one that has a wide variety of insurance companies that they do have relationships with. Not one, not two, not a hundred. Somewhere I would say between 10 and 20 would be great depending on the market that might not be possible. But a good independent agent is going to have a contract with multiple insurance companies. Now, you'll remember how I talked about captive agents potentially having that intimacy with the insurance carriers. Independent brokers can have this as well. If they have an appointment with an insurance company for a long time, there's nothing stopping them from having that same intimacy, that same connection, that same uh, understanding with the underwriters of that company or with the executives of that company or even with the claims adjusters. Because remember, even though the independent agent is not an employee of that insurance company, the claims adjusters probably stay put as do the sales folk and everyone else involved. So a good independent broker can make those same types of com of connections and relationships with the insurance companies that they represent. Beware of the independent broker that is limited to one or two insurance companies. There's usually a problem. That's usually indicative of a situation where they're not able to get more insurance carriers willing to appoint them, basically to give them permission to offer their products. That's something you should be aware of and be concerned about because a good insurance broker or agent that's independent, independent companies would want to do business with. And again, if they're choosing not to, hmm, perhaps you should choose not to as well. Just saying. And finally, with an independent insurance agent or broker by law and by by the documents, I guess, and I'm not an attorney, disclaimer, they represent you to the insurance carriers. So they're not going to try and force feed you anywhere because they work for you. They will either find another carrier or tell you that they do not have a market. There is no other way for them to go. All right, that's just a quick snapshot of the three types of ways that you can purchase insurance from a person, an independent broker, an employee broker, or a captive broker. We're going to talk about some more. We're going to talk about some other things having to do with claims right after the break. Remember, stay tuned, and we will be back in a flash. This is Insurance Hour, and I'm Carl Sussman. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.